And this is of uh, uh, hotels, restaurants, other establishments that fit within the phase two criteria. The um, the uh, workers can come back to uh, begin the process of reopening to the public. He does not announce the date for the public opening for restaurants and hotels, but all the preliminary work can start on Monday. Uh, the town is looking into expedited permitting for all sorts of things having to do with, um, with uh, uh, site plan approval, liquor licenses, other kinds of approval. We're trying to make sure that the town is not going to be an impediment to economic recovery here. Obviously, we're doing this with the uh, public health foremost in our mind. Uh, today was a coordinating meeting with all the departments that issue permits, and they started digging into the uh, executive order 35. Tonight at 6.30, the planning board is going to be looking over their site plan of process, approval process. And tomorrow night, the select board will look into liquor licenses. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully the economy locally can start turning around a little bit, which is about as good a news as I've heard in a long time. So that's where we are. So, David, um, you said the planning board is meeting tonight. Does that mean we have to be done at 6.30? Uh, no, I, I, I ask that we uh, expand our Zoom capabilities so we can have two shows on at the same time. Oh, great. Okay. All right, so the warrant, so the budget. Okay, so last time we met, uh, we had to revise downward by about $150,000. Um, I balanced it again and sent that out to you. Uh, and again, excuse me, David. Excuse me, Hadley Media needs to turn off their um mic. Yay. All right, so uh, the budget is balanced. I sent out a summary uh, along with the budget itself. Uh, I was, I know, Val, um, Amy, you were hoping that we would be able to take savings from programs and plunk that into the reserve account. The reduction of the ambulance receipts, projected ambulance receipts, was so um, awful that I was not able to do that. That we had to cut programs and not add to the reserve. That's okay. Um, Would you mind, uh, just because I didn't have the time to go through all the line items and or look at it again, can you just let us know um, where you made your changes? Just some brief changes. Okay, so uh, public, public Works uh, uh, got a works over. Uh, we went through and we did a deep dive on all the salaries and what pot they were being paid out of our sewer water general fund, uh, cemetery, uh, general highway, uh, um, uh, building maintenance. Uh, so we made a detailed analysis of that and was able to redeploy the salaries. So it's much more transparent who's getting paid out of where. Uh, we did find some savings there. Uh, to the tune of about $24,000. Um, pardon me for one second while I tell them I can't take the call. Uh, we also went into the FERCOG energy prices and we got about a 50% uh, um, decrease in all of our fuel costs, gasoline, heating fuel and diesel. So I spread that out. So that's about $50,000 worth of savings. Um, I went into the tree budget and cut that to, to smithereens. I did add back into the building maintenance, the janitorial costs because the select board were concerned about the uh, maintenance of the new buildings. I think there's uh, still some debate as to whether we should do that as a contracted service or whether we should do that as a, uh, by hiring another employee. Um, 
What else? Uh, just went through and wherever I possibly could, I cut things um, and um, squeezed a couple of uh, pennies out of the revenue side. I did not touch free cash. I did not cut, touch other reserves. Um, so that's where we are. So on the tree budget, because you had, I saw that you had a minus and then another minus. I just wasn't uh, sure. So we were funding that twenty four thousand. Is that correct? Let's see. About I think that's that's where we are with that one. I think. I added a, um, uh, while I'm looking around for the tree budget, I added a, another slide in here to uh, show the, um, the breakout of the DPW workers. I thought that was excellent because I had another question in here with the fire and I was going to ask about that because I said the, the only person in the entire, you know, town right now that I see that's not getting any type of increase was the fire chief. And I thought that doesn't seem right. But when you gave me the, when you gave us the listing of all the salaries, I could see that you did do the, that there is an increase there, it looks to me like. Yep, yep. Am right. I correct? Now, it does also show if that is how that works, I don't know what the increase is gonna be if you just wanna keep it the same or close to what the fire chief was, I mean, the police chief, or if you're only looking to do 2%, it looks like you have uh, some wiggle room there that you got a good 13,000 available because 2% on top of, of, the, of the 93, I think it was, gives a lot, gives you more room. It's more like 95. So keep, keep in mind, he gets another payment for being the emergency management director. Oh, okay. Did not catch that. Yep. All right. So that's why you increase it more. Yeah. So he's got, he's got 24, 000, going back to the tree budget, 24,704. Okay. okay. Do we have a package? Uh, the only other question I have for you as Council on Aging, where you, um, they decided to look at um, lowering that cost a little bit. Yes, yeah, so we uh, we're going to read. We've renegotiated the grant for the drivers, and um, that that grant is going to come up for signature at the select board's June seventeenth meeting. And did you make adjustments to that? Yeah, so that's a, that's a grant through P, PVTA. Yeah, but did you make the adjustments in the budget, the Council on Aging budget? Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I just didn't look at the, the last one. I didn't compare, so I didn't know if that was adjusted already. I see the 5000 in driver salaries. I was guessing that what's what it might be. But. Yep. Okay. All right. Um. I guess uh, the the other thing I'd have to say is even if some of the numbers are still, you know, we could do a little, um, we doesn't mean we have to spend it. It's good that we budget for it, but it doesn't mean we have to spend it. So if we don't spend it, it's just more that we'll have in free cash next right. time. Right, absolutely. So, um, Anybody else have any ideas or any thoughts on on where we stand on this budget or no? I'm good. I think we've no. beat it up as much as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're quite welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So I, I think we should move along with the budget as 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 you present presented it to us um, and go with that. Um, we need a motion. Um, we'll, uh, we'll take that motion when we go to articles eight and nine because those are the budget articles. 
Okay. Are we going to go over? Did you want to go over the? Um, I see you also sent us a letter. The uh, budget recommended, amended. What is it? That's your. That's April. Trans April twenty ninth. Meet uh, letter. Yeah. Let me speak a little bit about that and then the reason why why you're getting that again and okay. even though it's due now. Um, so we have a AAA bond rating. Uh, it's very nice. Um, the thing that we are likely to do in the next couple of years is exactly designed to wreck a bond rating. So we're going to be spending from stabilization uh, and we're going to not be funding OPEB. So I have talked to our OPEB actuarial and our chief financial advisor and our investment advisors about uh, what are the credit rating agencies going to do um, when all these cities and towns have to dip into the rainy day uh, reserves and not fund OPEB to the level that they should. And the advice that we've gotten back consistently is that if you have a plan, if you have a written plan for how you're going to spend down stabilization and then replenish it, and if you have a written plan as to how you're going to not fund OPEB, but then get back to a program of funding your OPEB, then they will not downgrade your credit rating. So the April 29th letter of transmission to the Finance Committee, the Select Board, and the Capital Planning Committee is that written plan, uh, which I've used the concept of defense in depth. And I've shown a, a plan which is adaptable, flexible, multi-year, uh, and I've mapped out the next four or five town meetings showing how we're going to reinforce reserves and resist using stabilization fund, original stabilization fund, which we currently have $1.7 million. We're going to resist that and yet at the same time add to reserves in order to get us through the next three or four years um, uh, with uh, the coronavirus wrecking the economy. So I've shown this, I've uh, sort of shopped it around to my peers for peer review. Uh, I think it's as good a plan as we can put together at this time. I'm happy to discuss the purpose of that plan, but everybody should have a copy of it and everybody should be able to articulate it to anybody who asks about a, uh, what are we gonna do with our bond rating? Hopefully we'll be able to preserve it. Well, that sounds great. Um, and I see that you had specific goals when I was looking at that. Yep. And then a lot of them um, tell us, and some of them are pushed off like OPEB and tells you what your plan is. Um, yep. Some of them that say on target for 2021, I wasn't sure about because it looked like we wouldn't put it off. Such as I think there was someone hiring another person for DPW or for water. Yeah, that's that's going to have to be deferred. Okay. Um, so and uh, the planner. We said until January, but we're not. We haven't funded that right now. Yeah, that's out. That's out for another year. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to check in on on a couple of those to make sure that they were were pushing them off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And um, you talked about st the stabilization a little bit and how you're putting, you know, how we need to put the money back in and things like that, which is great. And I'm all for stabilization, but my, and, and two, it's one of the more articles that we'll be discussing. We're going to be putting money back into stabilization some of, so that we have the free cash for later. But what if we get in an emergency now because of the Corona, the, I don't know if, if that's enough 
the 75, I think 75,000 that we put in the um, FinCom reserve is enough to carry? Or do can you, can we leave some in, you know, do you, because if something happens, you have to go to town meeting to hit stabilization, correct? You can't, we can't touch it in midway. It depends if it's a true emergency and we would have to clear this with the Department of Revenue. Uh, you know, we'd have to pay face the, we'd have to pass the red face test. Um, they will allow us to, to spend money out of stabilization until some other relief can be uh, brought to bear, like an insurance payment or whatever. Um, you can retroactively go to town meeting and, uh, and access that money. Uh, we've done that in the past with uh, the library over at the Hopkins Academy when the water pipes burst. We spent money on an, an emergency basis and had town meeting approve it later on. Okay. I will, I will tell you as a precaution, uh, let's say that uh, June 30th comes and goes and we have not been able to hold a town meeting because of quorum requirements or whatever it happens to be. I did today submit a 112th budget for the month of July. So we're covered for July if we have to. And I've also submitted an application to the department, both of them to the Department of Revenue for to extend certified free cash into uh, FY21. So we have some backups to the backups here. Again, defense in depth. Okay. Uh, whatever we can do to reinforce our position. That's what we've, uh, that's my recommendation at this point. So if you don't hold a town meeting um, by June 30th, then free cash goes to zero your enterprise fund balances go to zero until they can be recertified. I have, I've short circuited that certification process. So you have free cash in FY21 if you can't have a town meeting prior to June 30th. Okay, David, we're gonna trust you. If you say so. <laughs> if you say all bases are covered, we, uh, it's just, it's a scary time right now. And so, uh, uh, but it looks like a lot of that stuff you've thought of. So you have plan B and plan C. I got plan W. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, David. Do you want to jump into the warrant then? Sure. Um, article four. I think these are fund balances that need to be transferred. Um, let's see. Uh, there's money going back to sewer impact fees to the Community Preservation Act. Um, about 40,000 going back to sewer impact fees and about 11,000 going to back to CPA. And then for our, our borrowing uh, adjustments, we've got two projects which are done and borrowed for. We have residual amounts of about um, 3,500 for the police, uh, the rather the dump truck and for the police cruiser, we have about $5,000 left or $4,000 left. Um, so all of that money can be swept back into the original pot and those borrowing authorizations can be adjusted. All right, David, I have a question on CPA. Okay. The, this is, I, I mean, the CPA meeting, it's been a little while, uh, but we discussed at one point, there was, you had something over in an article to be transferred in, but then we were going to say, but, um, Let me just look at, did you, did you take something off of these transfer funds from CPA from before? I thought there was supposed to be an adjustment, but maybe I'm uh, wrong. Could have been. Andy and I have been emailing back and forth, so. All uh, adjustments have been made on the CPA then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. 
Okay. And I don't have any questions. Okay. Is there a motion? This is a, this is a standard article where we sweep unproductive money back into the original pots. This is something we do every town meeting. So you need a motion to accept this recommendation? Yes, please. Uh, um, also move. You need me to spell it out? No, well, thank you. Okay. Second. Right. Uh, do we have any more discussion? No? no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All righty. So the next one is... Article sevens. Um, this is the CPA administrative article. Again, this is in the consent agenda. This is uh, this is standard stuff. Um, the set asides are supposed to be ten percent of the income for the three uh, uh, projects. The CPA asked for a higher amount to be set aside for open space historic preservation and housing. In addition, there's a balance left over from last year that's in the negative for historic preservation. So we're gonna allocate additional money for historic preservation. This is simply an internal transfer of money. It's not an expenditure of money, but the ex appropriation for uh, the administrative cost for CPA for legal review for office supplies for any other uh, administrative expense is $3,000, which is uh, right in line with how we've done this in other years. Anybody have any questions? If not, do I have a motion? A motion to approve. I'll second it. There's no other discussion. All nope. in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, we're making hay while the sun shines. <laughs> All right, so articles eight and nine are the general budget and the enterprise fund budgets. And I think we have agreed that we're supporting what we have at this point. Did I hear that correctly? That is correct. All right. So do I have a motion yeah. to accept the budget as presented? So moved. A second. Right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to number 10, the assessor's legal. This is for the $15,000 for an anticipated legal challenge to an assessment having to do with um, property in the town of Hadley. Uh, we think we're in the right, but we're gonna have to spend some money to uh, defend this. Dan Zidonic, do you wanna speak to this issue at all? Yeah, uh, what this is, is it's not for a specific case that we're looking at right now. Uh, this is money that we need. We had a case two years ago that we ended up settling that in order to go to the ATB, we'd, we would have needed money to hire a professional appraiser to go in and challenge it to testify as to, to the actual value of the property. Those appraisals run anywhere between 15 and 60 grand per property, depending on which property it is and how, how large it is. You can tell the 60 grand, you could probably figure out what those properties would be. What this money is for is if we get any cases in and we expect to get a couple in to have a uh, hire a professional appraiser that can work or testify before the ATB as an expert to do a cursory review over our my appraisal of the property to see if it's worth going forward or not because sometimes it's worth settling the case which we don't really like to do uh, it's more cost effective for the town to settle rather than have a large expense. The case that we settled, the abatement we gave back was probably about two thirds of what the cost of defending the case was gonna be. And there's no guarantee if we win that 
or if we, we go to trial that we would win. So there could have been that additional one third plus whatever we would have had to give them back. Dan, I have a question. Yeah. Why does it cost so much to get another appraisal of these properties? Are they, what makes them so difficult to appraise? Uh, the ATB, I, I can testify at the ATB as to how I value the property, but I'm not an expert. If we were to get, and I'm not saying that anybody has been in, but either of the large malls in town where it's going to cost about 60 grand just to get an appraiser in to value the properties. Some of the other larger properties in town would be anywhere between 15 and 20,000. I'm sorry, you, you cut out for a minute. What were the 15 and 20,000? What kind of properties are those? Uh, the larger, the larger properties in town, strip malls, hotels, motels, the larger buildings, the large office buildings. It's surprising how expensive it is. Uh, yeah, it's not having an appraisal done on a, a single family or a two family for, for a couple hundred bucks. Or even a commercial building. We just had it done on ours. It was 2000. Yeah, it... And the, the people that we would have to hire for what these are really specialty commercial properties, there's very few that are qualified to testify before the ATB. So does that cost include the cost of them testifying? Uh, this is just to have money in reserve to see if it's, if it's worth going to the ATB rather than settling. This wouldn't be used for a single case. Dan, I think this original article was twenty five thousand, and you the, um, the assessors. I, yeah, we we had knocked it down. I can't recall what the the initial figure was. Uh, was either thirty five thousand or twenty five thousand. I think it was. It might have been thirty five, and we knocked it down to fifteen. Seeing as yeah. we just want to have money, so that when and we anticipate several large commercial taxpayers coming in, we've already had some inquiries as to what we can do for them because of the, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, we anticipate having more than our usual share of commercial filers for fiscal 21. So this is a free cash article. There's no impact upon taxes for this one. Looks like the original amount was $75,000 from Something dated February 11th, 2020. Okay. Yeah, I think I knew, our, our, I our, our thinking with that was we were, we were looking to get money if we had a large case so we could go in for one or two large cases. What this would do is give us smaller pools of money to allocate, a smaller pool that we could allocate amongst a couple of different cases just to see if, if it was worth settling or going ahead with the trial. So what happens if we don't authorize this? Uh, at, at this point, we would need to basically need to call a, a town meeting if we got the cases in to have the money there. This is money that, that is going to be specifically set aside for that. If we don't need it, we're not going to spend it. But I mean, could, it, could we... If we didn't authorize it, could we rely on your assessment and and say that that's the amount? That's the amount. Uh, we could do that, but the ATB is going to frown on not having expert testimony as to value because the other sides will have their expert witnesses. But this money is not for expert testimony, right? It's for a a, a preliminary. This is for a preliminary estimate by an expert or by selected experts to see if our value is in, in the correct range. If it's, you don't have the confidence that you could, confidence you could get in the correct range on these properties, Dan? Uh, I think the values are fair that we have on them, but that doesn't stop them from, from applying. And Dan, can you explain why you think there's going to be an increase of people looking for assessment? We've already, we've, we've already had 
more than one taxpayer who owns commercial property in town come in looking for relief due to COVID. Loss of rents, loss of uh, revenue, say, for the properties. Dan, when you are doing current, are you offering them relief? I mean, it seems reasonable to offer them some relief. Uh, at this point, the way that there's a huge lag between when assessments are done and when they actually, what, what's actually taking place now. The, the assessment for the bills that are gonna be going out in December is actually the value of the property as of January 1st of this year. So anything that would pop up wouldn't actually pop up for another two years on the bills for this year. Okay, uh, if we have, um, would anybody like to make a motion or do we want to, do we have more discussion? It's one of those things that um, it is very difficult to understand. Um, I'm glad we have Dan being an expert at this. Um, we probably, during this time, um, we're probably going to get some things that we're not used to and, and, and um, we're going to have to deal with them. Um, so if uh, uh, we need to give a little support, I, you know, um, I'm thinking, and especially if we don't need to use it, um, I would be looking at doing that. But um, if oh, anybody has a motion that they would like to make. Can I ask one question? If we don't need to use it, Dan, does it go back to free cash or, or do we use it in your department for something else? Uh, this would be specifically because it's a separate article, it would be only for that one purpose. Okay. So if we don't use it it's for fiscal 21, back. it could get turned back in or it could be held over for fiscal 22 for the same purpose. If, but it wouldn't be, if that money wouldn't is, buy something. If that money is not going to be productive, we'll include it in the next sweep article. Yeah, if it turns out that we don't need it based on commercial applications, for fiscal 21, you can always pull it back next spring. So we need a motion? Yes, please. All right, I'll make a motion to approve this. I'll second that. Okay. Do we have any more discussion? No. Okay, all in favor of this Aye. article? Aye. 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 So all Aye. over, none opposed? Okay. So we're Thank all you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. All right. Uh, Article 11, you've approved, but I just want to touch bases with you because I've, in order to, uh, we uh, created a new revolving fund for the uh, senior center. Um, that's been approved by you, um, but I did have to add a restatement of the other revolving funds in order to comply with municipal laws. So this article you've already acted upon and um, all the, the additional language that I've added in there has, has not changed um, any of our revolving funds. I'm just doing this in order to comply with the Mass General Law having to do with uh, municipal finances. Um, Article 12, transfer into two stabilization accounts. Uh, both of them are free cash, uh, $25,000 to the Unemployment Trust Fund and $183,383 into stabilization fund. Again, defense in depth. The idea is that when we have surpluses, we put them into reserves and we think about those reserves strategically so that we can uh, be well prepared in years two, three, four, and five uh, to respond to whatever may happen. So whatever, whatever free cash was left over from the budget process that's being deployed into stabilization and unemployment trust fund. 
we have uh, about fifty thousand dollars of unemployment potential claims, not actual claims. Um, so uh, we we have we have some threat out there. Uh, we have an unemployment budget line item, but I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, address everything that may be coming down the pike. So I think putting this into a special fund for this purpose is um, prudent and is consistent with our defense in-depth uh, strategy. So why, why is it, David, that you, you want to put it just to that fund and you didn't want to put it and put it, you know, in case they need it and you did not want to put it into like a, a different stabilization where if they don't need it, you can use it for something else? Uh, the unemployment uh, trust fund we can spend out of for a stabilization, we'd have to come back to town meeting and uh, get a two thirds majority vote. So, um, you know, I think unemployment, I think we all can agree that this is one of our areas of vulnerability. Um, we're not laying anybody off that I'm aware of, um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that there aren't some secondary uh, claims being somebody who might be working for the town and another employer gets some uh, laid off from that other employer. The town has some liability here. So there's some creep that could come in from the outside that uh, we need to um, make sure that we have sufficient funds to address that. Hmm. So I, oh. I think I think I did hear I did watch a school committee that they that we do have one person or, or one position that the school was so that would affect that unemployment I would think right. B. Am I right? Yep. If they file a claim, we'd have to take care of it somehow. Okay. Uh, so originally, I mean, I, I, I think that we do need to um, keep that strong, but I just kept thinking why I was just looking for the downside of why we wouldn't move that to the, the finance committee reserve. And if they needed it, just transfer it over. But if they didn't need it, you would have it for something else. So that's where I was really yeah. wondering why that, why, what's the downside of that? Uh, the only downside is they on the reserve, and and this, uh, you know, this is this is not a discretionary expense. We would have to pay that. So, you know, I I think I think if you wanted to put it into your reserves, I'm not going to be that upset about it. But I think it's more prudent to put it into the unemployment trust fund. Amy, can I can I say something? Sure. It's Linda. I don't have my uh, visual on. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, this isn't a downside, but I do want to distinguish the difference between it being in your reserve fund and going into the employment trust fund is that your reserve fund is part of the, uh, an annual budget, which will expire after the end of the year. The, uh, the trust fund is a permanent, it's an article and it's a fund and it will go in there and stay in there. And it would, if it's not used, what it would do is allow that budget, uh, because unemployment is also part of the budget, if um, it would allow next year's budget to uh, amount to be decreased because there is the backup in the trust fund. So what it does is provide a, stabili a, sta a stabilization of sorts for the uh, for funding unemployment from year to year without the actual unemployment budget having to go way up, way down, um, because you, it's very, it's, it's so difficult to anticipate in advance what the claims are going to be for the coming year. So it's very hard to, to be spot on with that budget. So if you put it too low, then you might be looking to the reserve fund for um, $25,000 transfer to cover that year. If you put it too high, um, and then that uh, there's no problem that comes back, but the problem would be that you cut other budgets. I mean, that the money could have gone into other budgets instead. So um, I agree with David. It's not a, you know, you, 
do what you need to do, but I just wanted to explain there is a little bit more to it, I think. I mean, as far as giving you flexibility go the next uh, year or so. Do we have, so do we have an existing trust fund now and we're just looking to increase it? Uh, we actually do. Um, when I, uh, about five years ago, when I came in, I think it was close to $40,000 and it's gone down to a thousand over the years. And we've used it just for that purpose. Um, uh, one year, our, the, what we used out of the budget was um, 5,000. The next, another year, the amount we needed out of the budget for uh, unemployment was over 40,000. So you can see the the issue that um, and and I don't run this anymore, but you know this is now out of HR. But you know the issues will be the same. Um, so we would put that money into an, an existing trust fund, which does generate interest for itself, and it sits there, and it can only be used for unemployment. But if we find that it's overfunded, you just move the uh, you move the town budget down each year. But it would allow you to keep the 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 budget, let's say ten fifteen thousand dollars, and just keep it there, knowing that you had extra money in, um, in, in the um, trust fund, which would not need to be appropriated. Let's say we, uh, let's say it's January and we've used up the budget amount of the unemployment. We could just go and, and take the money out of the unemployment without any extra, um, out, of the, out of the unemployment trust without any additional appropriation. Okay. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any more discussion on this? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, David, is that a right number for free cash? Or is it 180, 180 since you made the adjustments? Uh, should be should be a right amount, but I'll double check the math before tomorrow night. Okay. All right. Um, so just as a preview, again, defense in depth, at the fall town meeting, we're going to be adding something on, like on the order of another $200,000 uh, to the stabilization fund. Uh, we should be certifying the free cash at around 300,000. So this time next year, we'll have something on the order of uh, $700,000 of, of stabilization fund that we can apply to the next year's budget uh, if we need it. So. This is the first step of a multi, uh, several steps of reinforcing that stabilization fund. Again, the uh, the goal is not to spend the original kitty in stabilization until we absolutely have to in years two, three, or four, or five. Um, so again, this is this is part of a long term strategy. Uh, Article 13, capital expenses. We have one, two, three, four, five capital projects here. Uh, the first is the uh, emergency generator for the public safety complex, $105,000. We're going to borrow that within the levy, so there's no impact upon taxes. There's no debt uh, ballot exclusion vote. Um, and the school department IT for 63,300, again, borrowing within the levy. So no debt exclusion ballot vote for that. Uh, both of these projects were tried in December and they were rejected by the voters as debt exclusions. So we we're gonna borrow within the levy. And again, defense in depth, we're transferring $100,000 of free cash into the within levy principal to pay down the principal on existing borrowing in order to create capacity for these two projects and other projects in the fall. Hadley Media, we have 5,000. That was originally 10,000. We cut that down by half because they've got some reserves they can draw upon. The right to farm signs, $600. And then the state mandated water tank fences for 65,000. Okay. $1,000 and. David, it looks like the school department IT was originally 50,000 and then now it's 63,300. Um, yep. What was the increase with that? 
The increase is that we were doing this as a um, two-step process of a total of $100,000. Um, what changed is the likelihood that we're going to continue with remote learning um, into the fall. We were thrown into the game of remote learning in March. Everybody had to do it by the seat of their pants. They did an outstanding job. Uh, but now we've had the entire summer to think about this and all the other school districts have as well. Um, and so I think this is a prudent investment for the needs of education for of our children. Um, it's something that the school department is asking for over a two year period anyways. And I also think it protects our school choice revenue stream, which varies between $500,000 and $900,000 a year. If people are making decisions about school choice based upon the ability of a school district to provide quality education in the time of coronavirus, um, they're going to be looking for schools that invest in IT, specifically designed to enhance remote learning. I, uh, I did watch the school, the last school committee meeting, and um, I know a big portion of this is for the Chromebooks. Um, I think that Paul has a little bit, he knows a little bit about the Chromebooks and has a good um, source of where to purchase Chromebooks at a good price. I, I think the school committee was very thrilled with Paul. He had given them some recommendations and, and, and um, helped them out a little bit which was awesome. And uh, I think they're looking to um, uh, send out a letter and see if we can get any more donations um, from Chromebooks. And uh, if they don't need to spend it, then they're not going to spend it. Um, also, if they can get some, um, I think they were looking at if they were going to get IT, like a grant money because of the uh, CARES Act that they were looking to put in for that grant and to see if they could get money for that purpose. Um, once again, if they got the money, then they wouldn't spend it. But being that they have to get, you know, they wanna make sure that if they do need the money, it, it, it is available to them. That's my understanding. And then another thing, David, down a little further, you still have a, a grid that has the Department of Public Works and all of their stuff and the explanation about how COVID has effectively put that off. Um, did you already go through with the Department of Public Works to kind of slim down that initial list? I know there was a, a large chunk of stuff back in February. Yeah, I, I, I had a very robust and frank discussion with Public Works that we're not in a position right now to fund the capital plan as requested for the annual town meeting, but we can defer a lot of this to the fall town meeting and have a much clearer view of what we need to be thinking about for capital. Um, capital is one of these things that's easy to defer because you know you don't see an immediate impact upon the budget but you do do it too much and it creates a crushing obligation in the future. So we want to work our capital plan, but I don't see a good way of doing that right now. And I don't see the voters supporting a robust capital ex uh, expenditure right now. I agree. Yep. And I have to get a dog by the way. Because uh, I've got no friends at uh, Town Hall anymore. That's a joke. Yeah. All right, so do we need a we need a motion on Article Thirteen? Yes, please. Yes. I'll uh, so move. I second it. Any more discussion? All nope. in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Amy, we're into uh, CPA land, and you're our representative of CPA. Article 15, $10,000 for a uh, fitness park. 
Okay, so yes, the uh, Zaturka Park, the, this fitness park is a, it's an outside um, platform where they have, um, I don't know if it's rings or different things you can do exercises outside. Kind of like um, some of the uh, places that you might see like F45 that, or, or some of the other places that are new and upcoming on Route 9, some of these fitness places. So this is an outdoor one. Um, you can download an app with it. Um, so it is something that um, the CPA, uh, it was actually somewhat of a split because there are some people against it. There was three people against it on CPA because some of them don't wanna put any more money into Zadirka Park whatsoever. Um, the others uh, liked it. Uh, there was some discussion whether we put it somewhere else or would Zaturka Park be the best place for it. Um, Zaturka Park, um, there's nothing going on there. We did spend a lot of money on it. Um, so it, it sounds like it's something, especially I, I'm thinking now would be something good where people, the gyms are closed. They have nowhere to go. If they could go outside, it might be a, a good opportunity for them to do that. Um, so uh, the only other thing I'd, I'd say about this is CPA, you can't, I, I know we're trying to be tight with, you know, a lot of the money because we don't know what's going to happen with the coronavirus and where our income is going to come from. But this is separate and you can't use any of this money to be part of the budget. So um, it, it, the, how I see this, this money, it's still going to stay where it is. It's still the only thing, the only downside with the coronavirus, I think, with this money is the fact that this money is invested in this investment has been going down because all investments, right? The stock market went down quite a bit. So the investments are down. But the only other thing is I still think we should, you know, look at um, keep going with 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 what's happening with CPA and, and, and spend it and give it back to our taxpayers. I mean, sitting there is not going to um, help our taxpayers. So I in this particular article, I am one of the five that was supporting it. I was at the CPA meeting that Jenny presented that and Jenny had gotten a grant for it too, right? So that this is, is going to be matched with some grant money? That is correct. Yes, it will be matched with some grant money. Yeah, it seems like a nice outdoor something, a feature that's going to be unique for our town uh, and get people outdoors and active, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. Need a motion? Yes, please. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. All right. Great. If there's no more discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Article 16, $6,000 to finish the school pavilion. Okay, the school pavilion. This is behind the elementary school. And this was to, they have the pavilion and they want to put lighting in and uh, picnic tables to a little bit, to make it a little bit easier to use for different other functions. So that would be very helpful to them if they had some lighting and a picnic table so that they'd have seating out there. So that's what that's for. What kind of functions would, would be occurring there? Uh, stuff from like Park and Rec. Um, it we could have things that if they had some lighting, it could go a little bit later, maybe. Um, they could do, uh, so maybe they could have maybe a camp, you know, could be out back there. So things like from Park and Rec. But also they do, I think, the, a lot of the baseball that they do out in uh, the elementary school, uh, Cal Ripken and stuff like that. So maybe if they needed to, I, I know that they use the, those fields all the time. Um, and it's not just, it's for the school, but it's not just the school. It's all the, the other sporting events. I know that they, they, they use the space when the school's not using it. All right, can I do a motion to approve? Yes, please. If you, all right, motion, motion to approve. Okay, great. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, article 
April 17th, uh, $2,250 to repair the uh, um, the round window with metal drip brackets that used to be the hooker school uh, and currently is residing at David Amoskin's house. Oh, okay. Let's see. All right, one second. I think I have a photo. <laughs> Let me see if I have the photo here I can show you. 